It is a special edition of Clemson Football Live where we're not talking about Clemson football. We're talking about Clemson basketball against Alabama in the Elite Eight. Toilets have to be flushing backwards. Crazy people are making sense. Terrible food is actually good for you. That's how I feel today because this is just such this such different territory for Clemson and Clemson Athletics. That's why I'm talking Clemson basketball and Clemson football live. Welcome to the pregame for the Elite Eight matchup between Clemson and Alabama. Uh, it's kicking, uh, tipping off. See, kicking off. I want to say kicking off. I mean, Clemson versus Alabama. It's national championships. I mean, here we go. But in football, they're tipping off 849-ish on TBS. So you're brand new here. Welcome to Clemson Football Live. I'm normally talking football. And normally there's nothing much to talk about with basketball, with Clemson basketball. It's been a while, and you can tell it. But I do appreciate you tuning in. I hope you'll subscribe if you like what I'm doing. You'll pass along to your friends, your neighbors, and anyone who, uh, well, just likes Clemson. Yes, this is an, uh, a, a cup of regular coffee at 815. I need the energy. So let's dive right into this game. If you'd have told me that Clemson would be in the Elite Eight five weeks ago, I would have laughed at you. If you would have told me two weeks ago that Clemson would be in the Elite Eight right now, I might have blacked out I would have laughed at you so hard. And this is where a lot of people, fans who, t- I, I know what it's like to be a fan and be hopeful and, and, and hope the best and wish and everything, but if you're always in a place of where you're hoping some type of Red Sea splitting miracle happens so your team can win, that means your program's not in, really in a good place. And that's where we've been with Clemson basketball for a very long time. I said this on the video uh, the other day when I talked about them making it to the Elite Eight. Clemson is a football school. Duh. But Clemson had a lot of talent last year, and it was mismanaged. Uh, I have praised Brownell as being a great coach who doesn't have to be great. Uh, I've said that he's a really good basketball coach who doesn't have to be really good because he's coaching at Clemson. I also said the other night, for, I'm just catching up, some of you who are, who are watching this right now, uh, <clears throat> that, and I see some comments in here, uh, I'm going to get to that in just one second, but, but I'll say this, just stick with me. Um, I, when I talk about Clemson fans, when they're talking about Clemson basketball, we actually sound a lot like South Carolina Gamecocks talking about football. You know, the Gamecocks are... They always have an excuse of why their football team is just eh, lackluster. Might win a game here and there. They don't supposed to, but overall they lose. What? What is the? What is the reason they always give? Drum roll! Drum roll, please. We're in the SEC, and it's hard to win in the SEC. And us Clemson fans make fun of them. We're like, you are such losers. Until it becomes basketball season, what do us Clemson fans do? We sound a lot like Gamecock fans. Talking about the reason that our basketball team's not that good is because we're in the ACC and we have to play North Carolina and Duke and those handful of teams that in any given year can be a pain in the butt, can be a top 15, top 10 team. So being a Clemson basketball fan can be very frustrating, but it is really good to see Clemson, Brad Brownell specifically, Pull this group together after an embarrassing loss in the first round of the ACC play. For for Clemson, that is. They didn't pull an NC State where they started off <laughs> game one. I mean, yeah, NC State started off, and by the way, what a great job for them. Uh, my goodness, what a great story. I think that's my, one of my favorite stories I've seen in a long time in NCAA basketball. But, I mean, they, they played so early in the ACC tournament, they actually turned on the lights to the Coliseum. So... Let's look at Clemson. Clemson loses by 21 points to Boston College. I'm sitting there going, here goes Brownell, Brownelling it. Brownell could be a great coach. Brownell could have made a trip to the Final Four before. It just doesn't seem like that. It's going to happen. And then he does this. P.J. Hall is looking good. Let's talk about some of the Clemson players here. 
Real quick, say hello to a few people. Uh, Parker Henderson, howdy, my friend. Parker is a member of Clemson Football Live. Good to see you, buddy. Russ Tastic, Clemson, Alabama, this one could go either way. I'm all in for the SEC, but this channel has taught me to have a ton of respect for Clemson. Looking forward to this game. Russ Tastic, thanks for being here, my friend. Uh, this this is just going to be uh, this is going to be a good game, and I want to get to that in just a second. Notre Dame twenty one sixty four. I'll be rooting for you guys against Georgia. Uh, Stephen P. Uh, hold on, I, I didn't put that up there uh, for you. Notre Dame twenty one sixty four. We're glad you're here, Stephen P. I heard Dabo is at the game. Uh, I would not be shocked if he's there. He's in Los Angeles. Let's dive right into this game. Now, let's let's throw this out there. Clemson, Alabama. They played what uh, November the twenty eighth. Beat them, I want to say, in Tuscaloosa. That was one of their really good wins of the year. Their best being North Carolina at North Carolina. Only the second time in history that Clemson has beat North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Both times under Brad Brownell. DP, we respect Alabama. It's a great rivalry. It's going to be. It, this is going to be a good game. Now, Alabama, they lost in their first round of the SEC tournament. They had, what, a double bye? They're just sitting there. They're chilling out. I think they were there. What were they, a three seed? Yeah, Alabama was a three seed. Florida had to beat Georgia to get into the game. And Florida beat them by 14 points, and boom, they're gone. They're out of it. You know? Now, that Florida team made it to the SEC championship only to be beat by Auburn, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of the same. Kind of the same story for Alabama – and, and, and Clemson as far as how they did in their conference tournament. Now, Alabama didn't get blown out by 21 points by a crappy team. But what I really like here is that Brownell has his guys playing and that his guys are playing very well. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you to look for. Of course, let's talk about some of the players. Let's talk about some of the players for Clemson. P.J. Hall. P.J. Hall is actually... Uh, from a high school within 20 minutes of my house, Dorman High School. Anybody who's heard of Dorman High School, you're like, Dorman? Yeah, interesting fact. Dorman, Spartanburg, it's in this called Spartanburg County. It's here in the upstate of South Carolina. It has produced some great athletes, unbelievable athletes. Um, uh, one of them is Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel played at Chapman High School in Spartanburg County. Uh, it was somebody told me that if he lived a couple of streets over, he would actually played at Dorman. I don't know if that's true or not, but a lot of great players have come out of Dorman, have come out of Burns. Marcus Lattimore played down at South Carolina when they were really dominant. He played at Burns there in Spartanburg County. So PJ Hall, he's he's part of this big mix of great athletes that comes out of Spartanburg County here in the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, one of my, I'm going to go ahead and air the grievances, as uh, uh, Frank Costanza used to say uh, during Festivus for the rest of us. My airing of the grievances, P.J. Hall should have got the ball more last year, and maybe they would have had a better chance. I, I was screaming at the TV during the 2022-2023 20, uh, season, and folks, he got the ball more this year. The guy's looking great and very happy for him. Uh, what a great story Ian Shefflin is. Ian Shefflin, a six foot eight uh, forward. The guy can spot up, pull the three. He's a rebounding machine. He's banging on the boards. You've got to have that guy. And I think he won, what, ACC Most Improved Player? I, I believe he did. Please forgive me for if, if I'm wrong there. It won't be the first time I'm wrong on something. Just ask family and friends. But Ian Shefflin is one of those guys that you just see that playability out of him. He's, he's, he's never stopping. He'll spot up and pull a three on you. That's the thing about him. You see, you see Ian Shefflin, six foot eight, bouncing up and down the, you know, the court, just coming up here and there. He gets the ball, pulls up, pops a three in your face, and you're like, "What just happened?" That only happens in the NBA, where a six foot eight guy is bringing the ball up the court too. You know, watch Ian Shefflin. He's very, very comfortable with with handling the ball, bringing it up the court. Like, like if the defense has clamped down, and they're playing kind of like a full-court man press to where they're just hanging wherever their man's at, and they're going to play the guards really hard. Ian Shefflin would just jog on up the court. 
dribbling the ball. Guy's very comfortable, very impressive. He's really hit his stride during this um during this uh, during this tournament. Uh so the scoring leaders for Clemson right now uh PJ Hall 18.4 points per game shooting about 49% uh from um from the floor. He's a 78.8% free throw shooter. Best free throw shooter, one of the best free throw shooters in the country is on the team, Joe Girard. Unfortunately, the other night, he missed two out of three of his uh, um, free throw shots on the on the foul on the three-point. That was a ton of words there, and it did not make sense. He got fouled while shooting a three-point shot, missed the shot, went to the line, missed two of three. That's very unlike him. The guy is one of the best free throw shooters in the country. We have him on the team. And then Chase Hunter. Chase Hunter's been around for a very long time. He averages about three assists per game. He's one of those guys that he can come in and he can score, you know, 20 points, 15 points here, 18 points there, uh, and, and take over a game. He really did a great job against Baylor in, in the round of uh, 32. So we're seeing some really good things out of him. Where I want to see, and now let me just go over some of the Alabama players. I'm not familiar, so I'm having to read off this the stat sheet for Alabama. What I do know about Alabama is that they score, and they score a lot. They are very good at scoring. By the way, both of these teams come, in, come into this game 24-11. and 11. So they played a lot of games. Both have played 35 games. Alabama's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. The over-under is 163.5. This game is in Los Angeles, and it is on TBS at 849-ish. So the game will tip off in about uh, a little less than 25 minutes. Now, for Alabama, their leading scorer, their leading scorer is Mark Sears. He's a senior. He's 6'1". He's out of Muscle Shoals. The guy's 21.4 points per game, four uh, rebounds. For assist, he shoots about fifty percent from the floor. You got to you got to pay attention to this guy. You can't you can't sit around and go, hey, I wonder where Mark. So Mark is dropping dimes on you. That's you better watch out. Uh, top uh, free throw shooter Grant or not free throw shooter a rebounder. Rebound leader Grant Nelson, and then uh, for their assist, Aaron Estrada. So, why do I want to see out of Clemson in this ball game? Well. One, one of the, let me see, Jonathan Benton, are you going to, let me go to the, let me go to the, uh, some comments, Joey Webster, y'all about to get smacked, okay, all right, Joey, how's y'all's team doing, Joey, are y'all doing, oh, yeah, that's right, y'all are out of the tournament, uh, Jonathan Benton, you going to stream the game for us, I'd love to, if I wouldn't get banned, you can find it on YouTube, all you have to do is type in, Clemson versus Alabama Elite Eight, and and it, it'll be some. It, what's so funny is it'll be streamed from like I don't know some other part that's not the United States, some other part of the world, and you'll be able to see the whole thing. Let's get let's get back right back in here and let's talk about what I'm looking for. Okay, folks, you know me. T- you know me with football, but I want to tell you I have way more experience with basketball. I officiated for many years around some really good players, around some really good ball, and uh, used to work the Clemson camps and everything. I, I'm, I, I have more insight into basketball than I do football, but our basketball team is so. Ugh. I mean, that's why this is a miracle. That's why I don't. That's why I just name it Clemson football. And if I talk about something, you know, like this, I, t- I talk about it from time to time. But here's what I want to say. When Clemson has lost ball games this year, and they lost what four ball games by one point, they've lost a few other games by five points or, or less. Clemson's record could be even much better than what it is. Okay, we've seen them lose by one point a lot. So for them to play in the ACC, they've lost by one point a lot, and they got duped up in Durham earlier on. But why I'm bringing this up is when you see Clemson lose games, and I want you to pay attention to this. I want, if you've watched Clemson basketball this year, and I have, I've watched a lot of Clemson basketball this year. When they lose games is when they rush the play and have poor shot selection. I've, 
I can tell you when they're going to lose the ball game. And I'm going to tell you right now, unless something changes sometime in the game, if Clemson comes out and they have poor shot selection, they're not, they don't have good ball movement, and they're not more selective with their offensive game. Shot selection. If you see poor shot selection and it sticks throughout the majority of the night, Clemson loses this ball game. But that has been the difference for the most part in this entire tournament is that Clemson's had really good ball rotation. They've had fantastic shot selection. And it's produced an Elite Eight appearance. So, with that said, Clemson needs to stick to that same game plan. Don't change anything. Don't change what got you here. Yes, everybody's nerves is going to be popping. Alabama doesn't supposed to be here. Alabama doesn't supposed to be here. Alabama had a good year. Clemson had a pretty good year. For Clemson basketball, they had a really good year. Compared to other teams, eh, it's okay year. Neither one of these teams supposed to be in the lead eight. Where's Auburn? Where's the SEC champions? Where are they at? Oh, they're out. Where is South Carolina, who had a really good year? Their their coach can he can, he can coach very very well. Where are they? At? Where are they? oh they're out. Where's Kentucky? Kentucky Kentucky didn't even make it out of their first round. They're back in Lexington, trying to recruit another top recruiting class, only for them to probably lose in the first or second round next year. Alabama is here. Clemson is here. North Carolina's not here. Virginia's not here. Clemson is. So both of these teams, they don't have experience in a big game like this for basketball. Now, if this was football, this would be a different story. Both fan bases would know what to expect. I know that the landscape of both football teams, especially Alabama with Saban leaving, has changed, but I'm just trying to give you something to be able to to relate to. That if this was football, we would know exactly the magnitude of this game. But neither one of these teams know the magnitude of an Elite Eight appearance. They don't. Neither one of them. So both of them, their nerves are going to be going nuts, right? The message that I would be preaching if I was a coach of either team is don't go out there and change anything. Don't change anything that got you here. If I'm Brad Brownell, and of course that's all I care about, is that Clemson wins this game. Alabama's going to be tough. It's This is going to be a tough game because they score a lot. They're, they, they're very good at scoring. But Brownell has always been an incredible defensive coach. Always. I think one of the best defensive coaches in America. In the college game. His problem has been scoring. Scoring has been no problem during this tournament. The thing with Alabama, a team that is used to scoring a lot, one thing that Clemson could use to their favor is by... It's by frustrating Alabama that they're not scoring as they're not being able to score as much as they would like. Does that make sense? Like, like if if they're so used to just coming and going at will and scoring, and Clemson's clamping down on it, that that can create some anxiety in a team. And I look for Brownell to do that. I look for him to do that. But what are my keys to the game? And I'm going to let you go because I, I want to. I want to go downstairs and and get ready to settle in and watch this game. My keys to the game, here's what Clemson has to do. Great shot selection. Don't rush it. Don't just throw up junk. Great shot selection. Everybody, next, everybody has their part. Don't try to be any other person than who you've been this entire tournament. Don't do it. Play your role. Fulfill your assignment. Don't go out there and try to be a star. Don't go out there and try to be something that you're not. If you are if you are a supporting role, do the supporting role at, as your finest, but don't start jacking shots. Next, 
Number three, P.J. Hall. He was extremely, extremely effective in the Arizona game. Why? He went into halftime with what? No fouls? One foul, Mabel? Maybe? I can't speak. Anyway, make fun of myself. My point is, P.J. Hall is such a physical player. And he's went up against some really physical guys. That's the thing about it is, is he's played against some of the toughest guys in college basketball already. Already. All right, he's already he's already done it. The key keep him out of foul trouble. No cheap fouls. Fourth, the fourth point, which is really first, and and it goes with shot selection, ball rotation, ball rotation. What are they giving you? Ball rotation. Well, they ain't giving me anything. They okay, great, great. Then don't rush the shot. All right, don't get yourself trapped. Don't pick up the dribble. Heck, don't even start the dribble if you don't have to. You have more options. That's just old-school basketball. Why are you dribbling, son? Well, because I got the ball. Did you even look to see if anyone's open? Well, no. All right. No. Good fundamentals. So, to recap, I'm going re- to re-shuffle uh, it a little bit because of how I just laid that out there. So, good ball rotation, which leads to good shot selection. Don't rush anything. Next, you, if you're a supporting role, be a good supporting player. Don't go out there throwing up shots. Don't go up, th- go out there doing something that you haven't done up to this point. Next, P.J. Hall, and then, of course, other players, but P.J. Hall especially, don't get into foul trouble early on, okay? If the officials are allowing everybody to play, and they could, they might let them kind of bang bang down, in the, uh, down on the blocks. you got to adjust the game to the officiating. You, you have to, you know, and don't expect them to bail you out, but Stay out of foul trouble with the best you possibly can. And then, and then last but not least, and then last but not least, Brownell, you called a timeout in the last 45 or 30 seconds of the game against Arizona. You drew a beautiful play that went to P.J. Hall. Arizona, they're no slouch. They're a fantastic basketball team. This is the time for you, Brownell, to shine. You've already got them to the Elite Eight. You've, you've accomplished, you know, beating North Carolina twice in Chapel Hill and everything. But I really believe that Brownell is a really good coach who hasn't had to be really good because he's at Clemson. This is a night for him to make a name for himself as more than just, hey, I got them to the Elite Eight. Hey, I beat UNC. No, I believe tonight he can get them to the Final Four. And... I think it's a personal challenge to himself, and I and I hope he does it. So, uh, going to get in here. Let me see. <laughs> Parker Anderson talking trash. Uh, yes, yes. The Gamecocks, the Gamecocks are loving it uh, because they're not playing tonight. But anyway, folks, I don't know. I, I have an early morning tomorrow morning, so I don't know if I'll do a post game win or lose. Uh, but I do want to tell you this: this is a very special moment. This is a very special moment for Clemson. Uh, it's a it's a very special moment for the school because it, look at this. I know the football team has not been as dominant over the past few years as as, as they, um, you know, as, as they have been. But Clemson is still a very much uh, important football school. Um, that's why everybody's scratching their head, going, "What's going on?" Because you know you go sub ten wins and everybody thinks the 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 sky is falling. Why? Because Clemson's operated at great excellence. Uh, the soccer team. I'm not a big soccer guy, but hey, it's impressive. National champion, uh, national champions. You know, here they are. Uh, the baseball team won the ACC championship last year. The guys look great. Uh, they're they're a contender for the national championship this year, College World Series. And now you have basketball. This is very important for Clemson because if they could get to the Final Four, get into the Final Four, especially how the transfer portal is working and how they're using it at Clemson basketball. You could pull in some players that could keep this run going. A great example, I was watching UConn tonight, which Danny Hurley, I think he's the best basketball coach, active basketball coach in college basketball right now. The guy can just coach his brains out there at uh, UConn. But Tristan Newton, I want you to hear this. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Tristan Newton, first-team All-American, if my memory serves me correct. He's he's playing guard or uh, number two shooting guard for uh, uh, UConn. He's a transfer student. From where? North Carolina? Duke? Uh, maybe maybe some other big team? Nope. East Carolina. He was playing for East Carolina last year, and this year he's, what, first team All-American? He's tearing it up. 
you never know. Dalton Connect, it's playing, uh, or I think it's Connect or Connect or whatever, playing up at uh, North, right, up at Tennessee. He's from uh, what Northern Colorado. The guy's killing it. You never know where these stars are going to come from because the game is maturing. Clemson, if Clemson does very well tonight, and they've already done well per Clemson standards, but if they continue to do well, maybe this could change some things for Clemson in the next, you know, for the coming five to ten years. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But where they're at right now and how the transfer portal works for Clemson basketball, it's, this could definitely turn the tide. So, folks, let me know your comments, what you think. Uh, let me see. I heard the power is out in Columbia. Yeah. Baseball is doing good. All, uh, almost uh, what most of us can agree on. Go Braves. Yeah, the Braves, uh, last time I saw, they were hammering the Phillies. So, Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about uh, tonight's game. Any predictions? Any thoughts? Uh, and I will, if I do a halftime or post game report, it'll probably be a miracle because I have an early morning. So, anyway, thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're here. Basketball, football, baseball, I don't care. If it's orange and white, I'm here for it. Go, Tigers.